honestly, I don't really remember ever really wanting not to race. I always wanted to race. I always wanted, you know, I always play the video games. I remember being super young, watching Dust of Glory over and over on repeat. I always wanted to race. A lot of people ask, what is it like being Rob Mack's son? And it's just, it's no different than your dad, you know, it's just dad. And, and you've seen what he's done all his life and, and you look up to that, obviously. But the pressure from racing on my own wasn't, wasn't very harsh. I'm kind of very low-key guy. I, I, I go to the races, I, I don't get nervous. I just go and try to do my best. But ultimately, I wouldn't have any, any other way. I guess when the kids were born and as they were coming up, you know, growing up and stuff, with you, you usually want to get your kids into sports or stuff like that. And I just kind of let them do what they wanted to do. If they wanted to go ride a bicycle, let's go do that. If you want to skateboard, Caden was 13, 14 years old. I started wondering, does he want to do this? You know, ultimately, I think he turned, uh, he was close to 16 years old, and I started wondering, like, are we gonna do this or not? And then uh, ended up coming up with uh, an RS1, a Polaris was available to, to borrow to go run a race out at Prim, and we ended up doing that, and then he caught the bug. And uh, from there, you know, it's just been, you know, four years of tons of racing. He's actually racing more than I am now, but he's doing good. And yeah, we first got into UTVs, I believe in 2016, my dad went and uh, purchased the Polaris Razor and that's honestly my, my first um, intro to off-road racing behind a steering wheel rather than behind handlebars. And from that moment, um, you kind of realize that, hey, these machines are pretty cool, very capable. Um, looking into some other classes to start racing, the UTVs seemed to be the best route. You were able to find the most support. Um, there was a lot of places to race, a lot of different classes to race. And that's what's so awesome about UTVs. I say it to a lot of people. You can take the UTV out of your garage and go race on the weekends and go put it back on Sunday night and go ride Monday morning. I was always told to invest in what keeps you connected to the ground and one of those things being tires. Um, going around the mint course, there's a lot of rocks. You're frankly sometimes driving on rocks. If you don't have a strong tire that you know you can trust, um, I don't see how you're gonna win the race. Um, that goes for any class. From day one, I raced on BFGs. There was simply no other option. We were able to find a good tire that worked for the kind of racing I was doing. Uh, BFG has a, has a ton of different variations and I love to be partners with them. That year, the Mint 400, um, you know, the whole week or two weeks before from when we decided you're gonna ride with me. And, you know, it's like, okay, first time, this is a real deal. You know, we're, we're gonna go win the Mint 400. We're gonna try our hardest and you gotta do good. You need to practice flat tire changes. You need to be a good navigator and we can't have any father-son moments or arguments or anything. You gotta work. There's times he's Rob Mack and there's times he's my dad. Uh, honestly, the Rob Mack times outweigh the dad times, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Um, the one thing I want in my life right now is to succeed in the sport I love, which is off-road racing. And him being Rob Mack to me is going to make that happen. And it has, and it, it, it's working. So that's, that's the way I like it. When he actually got behind the wheel of the truck for the first time in a race was the California 300. And I, I ended up riding with him in the truck because I wanted to make sure he's okay. He's not doing things stupid. And, you know, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of, a lot of money in that. I didn't want to, you know, have it get torn up or anything. So I rode with him qualifying and, you know, he hauled ass and I was telling him, you know, slow down. And at the same time, my head was hitting the back of the seat because he was on the throttle hit, you know, trying to jump the ditch. And, um, you know, ended up out qualifying everybody else by like 10 seconds that race. And um, I realized, you know, he's very under control. I realized after the fact, him racing that Polaris RS1 for those three years really taught him a lot. Growing up in Las Vegas, uh, the Mint 400 week, uh, it was a week long event to me as a kid and, and I was always looking forward to that. Always sometime in March, uh, getting the poster and, and uh, really looking forward to go out there for that race, uh, whether my dad was racing or not. The Mint has, has something different to me. Um, it has this, this long lineage of history, um, whether it be the casino, um, the movies it's been a part of, seeing the decanters we, my dad has on the wall, um, there's, there's a very, very rich history behind the Mint 400 and, and to me, um, it's not just a race, it's a little bit of a show, it's a little bit of uh, a history lesson and, and at the end it is a race.
Yeah, being a part of the, of the BFG legacy is something I definitely don't take lightly. There is so much nostalgia in that legacy and to have my small little piece of it um, is very important to me. I've been in a lot of different vehicles and BFG you know, enjoys being competitive in each of those classes. BFG's worked very hard to be the best. As a racer, you can appreciate that. Whether it be traction, road fuel, all those things, BFG uh, continues to put more time and effort than any other tire brand to be the best.